what we're going to do here is we're going to do law of signs. Law of signs. Um, we just left uh, the world of Sokotoa, which was right triangle only stuff. Um, so when you use Sokotoa, this is based on the fact that it's a right triangle. If I have a non-right triangle called an oblique triangle, then you can't use Sokotoa. Another thing that is not allowed to be used is um, the Pythagoras statement. Again, this is dependent on the fact that it's a right triangle. So you can't use these guys for oblique triangles. Oblique is a fancy word for uh, a diagonal, and sometimes you use that uh, word as a diagonal. But technically, diagonals are from vertice or vertex to vertex of a polygon. So they say any line that's not horizontal or vertical is oblique. If you, if you um, uh, draw a triangle that doesn't have a 90 degree, a vertical and horizontal perp perpendicular situation, then you have an oblique triangle. So let's draw an oblique triangle. I'll just draw something that's kind of like an equilateral or close to it and examine how we figure out parts of this triangle if we cannot use Sokotoa and Pythagoras, which is reserved only for right triangles. I'm going to give this uh, some labels here. I'm going to label this with the kind of traditional ABCs. Capital uh, letters go for the uh, angles, the vertex points, and uh, little letters will go opposite each one of those, and I have to put the proper little letter across. If I start with a situation, like um, uh, if I start with the situation of find an angle A, um, find angle A, or find sides, what we need to see is what is given in a situation like this one. So I'm going to put in some numbers here, and let's see, I'll put in uh, maybe angle A is 20 degrees, and little a is maybe equal to 7. And what we want to do is we want to figure out what the other parts are. You need at least three pieces of information to use something called law of signs. Technically, Sokotoa is also three pieces of information. Sokotoa, you've got three letters, and then the other piece of information is the fact that one of the angles is 90. So these all have uh, the idea that there's four pieces of information that you're working with, but you need three little pieces to make it work. So I'm going to say that the angle C over here is maybe uh, 50 degrees. So we'll make that 50 degrees. And now I'll ask, find length of little c. So the first thing I like to do is I like to ask students to look for the phrase or use the phrase, do you have opposites? It's more of a question than a phrase, I guess. So do you have opposites? And what I mean by opposites is do you have an angle and its opposite side as a given value? Do I have that in this case? Yes, so 20 degrees is opposite to 7. And that's key for doing law of signs. It's very important. So let me make some room here. Um, what law of signs says, and I'm going to use the ABCs here, and then I'm going to come back and solve the problem in green there. So what law of signs says is that you can create ratios. Um, not law of signs, excuse me, law of signs. You can create ratios based out of the sine of an angle, like angle A, ratioed with, or made into a fraction, or ratio with is a fraction, so ratioed with its little letter A. Given that we have three letters, we can create three fractions here that are very similar. Almost every textbook will have this, where it's these three fractions are equal to each other. Now, if I was to really solve for one of the missing parts here, uh, I only need two of the fractions. So that's the first thing you need to realize is that there is a colored box in the, uh, a colored box in the textbook <laughs> that'll say these three things are equal. They are. But I only use two of them to solve something because I can't have two equal signs. It's not an equation. You can have only one equal sign. What I like to do for my formula is I like to emphasize that it's just sine of an angle it's sine of an angle over its 
opposite side. And I write, I just tend to write one fraction. I mean, I could say it's equal to another sine of a different angle, but the way it looks in my brain is the same. That what I'm really looking for is just two fractions where I have opposite angle and its opposite side available. And I can build a starting ratio and then set up another ratio with one missing part. And if we have fraction equal fraction, hopefully we remember cross, multiply, and divide almost always is what happens after that. So I, would, I never say cross, multiply anymore. I usually say cross, multiply, and divide because almost always it is a cross, multiply, then divide. Okay. Before I actually show you a sample of how to solve for C there, I want to take you back to an SAT problem. A couple reasons. One, some of you are going to be taking SATs. The other is, this is a very popular SAT question, and this is a part of the geometry where people forget sometimes. Similar triangle geometry is this title. So let me show you a quick little sample problem of how we've used these kind of proportions before, where I've used these fraction equal fraction idea. So here's a uh, triangle, two right triangles, with it, one within the other. And a typical SAT problem, what we're going to do is do an SAT example here. Okay, not of a uh, trig problem, but just of one where we have fraction equal fraction to get your, kind of get your brain on that part of the idea. So what they'll do is they'll say that height over there is 10, and they'll say this height right here is 7, maybe this length over here is 12, and that length is X. We did that. Did we do this one just recently? Yeah. Okay, yep, on an SAT or? Yeah, I think it was SAT. Yeah, it was on an SAT sheet where we see this. You do know how to do this one. Okay. It is, it, you might have started in seventh grade, but it's hit a lot in geometry. And it's based on um, a, a theorem, which is angle, angle, angle theorem, meaning that if you've got all the same angles, which in this case, these angles are equivalent, then the sides are similar, meaning that I can actually set up proportions for them. So I want to go over this one because there is kind of a mistake that people make. The, if you thought this, maybe 12 is to 7, the bottom is to the upper side, as in some, and this is a very common mistake, watch out, as is x is to 10, okay? If some of you thought that, that's kind of a popular mistake. It's exactly, and the problem people have is they see the numbers and they build the fraction, but you need to see the geometry shapes. It's a bottom edge total that is related to the 10 going up. And the bottom edge, X is not even part of a triangle. X is part of a trapezoid over here. So you want to say, and you said that perfectly, X plus 12. That was really nice. Now I've set up the fraction. Um, I could cross multiply, but I think if I multiply by 10 and subtract 12, wouldn't I get X by itself? Can everybody see that? If I multiply by 10 and subtract 12, so let's go the whole equation times 10 cancels that. Put a times 10 on this side. 120 over 7 is equal to x plus 12. Then subtract 12, and you would get this SAT kind of sample answer. Wait, wouldn't you have to multiply 10 times 7? If I multiply 10, which is 10 over 1, then I'm only going to be doing that numerator, numerator, denominator, denominator. So. So back on this problem, and I didn't finish the calculation over there, it's an SAT sample problem, so you would have to actually figure out what that value is. But connecting it, I want to show you how I connect it back to this problem. So I'm going to focus, personally, I don't focus on the blue text here. I don't focus on this blue text here where it shows all the, the formulas for the signs. I focus on my red ones where I'm looking at just building fractions with that key phrase. So if I use angle over its opposite, sine of angle over its opposite, watch how I'll build the answer for this one. Okay, and so I'll say, now that I'm going to use my sine, let me just draw some arrows on how I did this now. So I'm going to do sine of an angle that I have with its opposite side. 20 degrees is the angle that I have. Sine 20 again is some small number between 0 and 1. I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it with a ratio over 7. Then I look to see what I have 
in terms of any other information, and I have a 50 degree angle at C, and I want to know the opposite side of that. So I set this equal to sine 50 over C. I'll just go ahead and use the letter C. And now I'm going to solve for C. We were just talking about when I use cross multiply. When do I use cross multiply? When the variable's in the denominator. When the variable's in the denominator. And that other problem, I didn't have to cross multiply because the variable was in the numerator. So that, this one, I do want to cross multiply. C times this, again, I want you thinking sine 20 is not 20. It doesn't have a 20 multiplier in it. It is not 20 times something. Sine 20, again, is this tiny 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, whatever number, some number between 0 and 1. So cross multiplying, you now have no fractions. And over on the other side, keep your brain the same way. It's 7 times this small number, sine 50. That way you don't accidentally do inappropriate algebra with it. Um, remember what I said? I usually cross multiply and then divide. I rarely say cross multiply without cross multiply and divide. So now I'm going to divide by that multiplier that's on my C. So to undo that multiplication of sine 20, you divide by sine 20. Excuse me, I went straight to the answer there. You can make a little more room here, make that work, and then I'll have this done. So I'm going to divide by the sine 20, and divide by the sine 20, and what you see on the right-hand side is the, how I'm going to calculate the answer. So 7 sine 50 divided by 7 sine 20, and that will be my final answer, which will give me the length of C. So this is where we take out our calculator. Turn on our calculator. Again, sometimes it's good to make sure your mode's in degree. Mine is in degree. So now I'm going to do 7 times, uh, time, so I don't have to do times. Uh, TI knows algebra. So 7 sine 50, close parenthesis. How many things am I dividing by? Because if it's more than one, I need parentheses for divide by. It's just one. Don't look at sine 20 as two things. That's one item again. So I'm going to go divide by sine 20. It sounds like some of you have already found out the answer. Okay, and it is a length of 15.678. So I'll say C is equal to 15.678. Let's go 68 and round it to the hundreds. What's that little zero above the um, sine 20? Um, that's probably my degree symbol. Is I'm probably trying to throw in degree symbols. You can see I got a, I got a little bit lazy, and sometimes I didn't put the degree symbol in. Technically, there's a degree symbol that should be there on all these little guys. Um, as I do my kind of my own notes, I don't tend to include that. When you finish, make sense of this. Side 20, uh, the, the angle of 20 degrees is holding a 7 length. If you have anything bigger, it should hold a bigger length. 50 degrees is clearly bigger. So hold the 15 length. Hopefully that makes sense. By the way, what is the angle at B? What's the angle at B? Is it 110? Is that doing the 180 trick? So let's just finish off the idea of solve the triangle. Solve the triangle is a phrase meaning get all the sides and all the angles that aren't listed. So if I was to solve this triangle completely, I would list what that is. And you're right, that's 110. So 110 degrees. Everybody, as practice right now, calculate using law of signs, using one of the, use the same proportion, sine 20 over 7. But now set this up and solve for B. See if you can get an answer. So let's go ahead and try to solve for B real quick. And I'm just going to use this space over here. And the same idea, I'm going to do sine 20 degrees over 7. It's equal to sine now 110 over little b. Cross multiply, B sine 20 is equal to 7 sine 110. Uh, divide uh, by sine 20. I'm not showing my work, please forgive me. 7 sine 110 divided by sine 20. We want to take our calculator out, run that calculation. So I have something up there that's very helpful. Um, the only thing I really need to change is the 50. So I'm going to use second enter on the calculator, and second enter brings back the last thing you did. I actually brought back the second to the last thing I did. There we, oh, I'm not, I, all right, never mind, I'm not going to do the full trick. 7 sine. 1, 1, 10, close parentheses, divide, sine 20, close parentheses, enter, 
and our answer is 19.232. So this guy is 19.232, rounds to 19.23. And the last thing you want to do is just make sure biggest angle, 110, goes to biggest side, 19.